Academy. Good to be with you today. I want to do some recovery talk. And my topic today is, is about walking free in him. And so just to add some humor, but to kind of also use this to make a point, uh, I'm going to be putting a link here so you can actually watch this uh, on YouTube yourself. But uh, check out this guy. Check out this video. Let's see what we can get here. These guys are getting ready to fight. This guy's a big show off. He's dancing around. Woohoo! Look at me. I'm really somebody. Fifty five seconds of this stuff. Okay, they're getting ready to fight. Look at all this stuff he's doing. Woo! Flip, flip, flip. Now the fight gets ready to start. Here it comes. Boom! Boom! He's down. <laughs> He's down. He's down. He's out. Game over. Man. <laughs> Man in recovery. You know, in recovery, you know, it's like, I love the example Zig Ziglar uses in a lot of this. He's passed, but in his training videos, he's like, you got to, you know, you got to prime the pump, you know, and you sit there and you start working on it. You're working really hard. You're working really hard. You're like, you got to prime the pump. And you realize, oh my gosh, I got to, I got to pour some water in this. So you pour some water down there. Like, yeah. All right. Yeah. And you, you got to prime that pump. And now you start priming. And you, 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 know, you, you get there. You start doing that for a while. You're working so hard. You're working so hard. And you think, oh, I'll stop. I'll stop. Like, no, no, don't stop. Don't stop. Don't stop. Because as soon as you stop, everything you do, you know, you, you, it goes all the way down. So you, you got to keep going. You got to keep priming. Oh, keep working hard. You keep working hard. And pretty soon, pretty soon, oh, there's a spiritual experience. And now... Oh, it just takes a little steady pressure and you have all the water you'd ever want. Hello, welcome. Hey, Christy. So the idea behind that of where I want to go is uh, to talk to you a little bit about recovery. I'm on page 75. And you know, it's funny because you get into 12 step stuff and it's like, don't talk about religion. Don't talk about religion. But the reality is, is the steps are a religious program. <laughs> uh, so... I mean, it's your effort of all that you do in following the steps and you holding to it and looking into every nook and cranny and working really tough and keeping yourself in fit spiritual condition. If you go do, 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 do while you have this crushed and mangled will, right? You're totally like this, this behavior is kicking your butt. You know, and, and, and within all of that, I'm supposed to get there and just prime the pump and do all these things in everyday work. Step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You know, and you got to do everything and do it many times a day. And boy, if you fail at one point, one point, oh, there it is. You lost your sobriety, right? And so here's page 75. It says, we pocket our pride and go to it, illuminating every twist of character, every dark cranny, dark cranny of the past. Once we have taken this step with holding nothing, we are delighted. We can look at the world in the eye. We can be alone at perfect peace and ease. Our fears fall from us. We begin to feel the nearness of our creator. Wouldn't we all like that, right? The nearness of our creator. We may have had spiritual beliefs, but now we begin to have a spiritual experience. The belief the feeling that the drink problem has disappeared will often come strongly. We feel we are on the broad highway, walking hand in hand with the spirit of the universe. Okay, so yeah, then later the next paragraph down there on page 75, it says it basically it's talking about, you know, carefully read. Now, this is what you do in, in step five, carefully read the first five pro proposals and ask if we've omitted anything for we are building an arch through which we shall walk a free man at last. And I mean, hey, that's. That's the promises of the steps, and you're absolutely right, man. You can sit there, and you can prime that pump. And if you work hard enough, and you work long enough, and you're diligent enough, and you're going to have a little steady flow, and you're going to have a spiritual experience. Now, that's an option, and that's a way. The title of the talk, Walk Free in Him. There's another option. 
okay? You maybe haven't considered this. In fact, most people that I've worked with that, that are believers in Christ, you know what I find out? They don't know the gospel. They do not know that they have been baptized into Christ's death and raised to walk in newness of life. They do not know that they are no longer, they had a heart of stone, and which was from Adam, spiritually dead, in need of life. They were excluded from the life of God, Ephesians 4.18, and they do not know that they've been cut away from that heart of stone. So they're in the Romans 7 experience thinking, this is me. I do not understand what I'm doing, you know? And so when you can go through this religious activity or you can walk free in him, okay? So I wanted to just give you an illustration of something that, you know, when you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, you're literally believing that when Jesus died, you died to who you were in Adam, and that's cut away. You're buried, you're raised now into newness of life. The Holy Spirit comes into you. So the same power that raised Jesus from the dead now indwells you. You get, you're as righteous as him, okay? The Holy, the Holy Spirit comes in you. You're, all your sin is taken away. Your whole pile of poo, who you were in Adam, in sin, in your sin, that's all removed, just cut away, right? You, 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 you know, you're no longer in the flesh. You're in the spirit. That's Romans uh, chapter 8, uh, around verses 8, 9, on to about verse 16. Talk about that. You're not in the, you're not in the, in the flesh. You're not in Adam. You're in the spirit. You're in Christ. And so, um, all that to say, I just wanted to get to a little illustration. It's, uh, it's in John chapter 14. It's a very meaty, a meaty thought. Um, but in John chapter 14, verse 20, Jesus is getting ready to leave. And he's, he's starting, he's talking about the Holy Spirit and he's trying to let them know. He's going to talk about the Holy Spirit again in, in chapter 16. Um, but in 14, he's uh, in the middle about starting at verse 16. I'm going to just read verse 20. Um, but he's talking about how the Spirit's going to come. And he gives this nugget, great caveat, I mean, the depth of this. I mean, this is one of those things you could almost pull a Spicoli in fast times at Ridgemont High. You know, we're like, oh, hey, dude. I mean, it's just like this is a mind-blowing thing when Jesus says this. He says, in that day, this would be the day the Holy Spirit comes, he says, in that day, you shall know something we're supposed to know again, right? You do not know, like in Romans 6. You shall know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. I mean, every time I read this, I'm like, oh, I've got to read that again. That's, what, 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 say what? Okay, in that day, you shall know that I, Jesus, am in the Father, and you, believer, are in me, Jesus, and I, Jesus, am in you. And I just read that a second time, and I'm still like, <sighs> I mean, what is that? Is That is deep. In that day, Mark, you shall know that I, Jesus, am in my Father, and you, Mark, the believer, are in me, Jesus, and I, Jesus, am in you. I mean, it always is just like that. It's so deep. <laughs> what a mystery. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians 1, 26 and 27. It's so glorious. So in that as an analogy, it's like, okay, so let's see here. So in that day, you will know that I am in my Father. So Christ, this is God, is in the Father. Okay. And you are in me. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so. Uh, I'm... In Christ, okay, and then Christ is, okay, Christ is in God, okay, um, oh. and I am in you, oh. so, Jesus, you 
you're so you're a me and then I'm a you and then you Okay. And it's just like, wow, it's just such a, such a deep, rich nugget. Uh, and so this is the life. So within that now, the way I was talking to a guy yesterday and I was like, so this is from John chapter 10, about verses 27 through 30. All of John 10 is a great read, but it talks about we're a sheep and how nothing can snatch us out of the hand and so in the example it's like so it's like God is over here holding the phone with the left hand which is you you're the believer you're the phone and then Jesus says no one can snatch you out of his hand so he's the right hand and he's got you so in in John chapter 7 verses 20 10 verses 27 through 30 they're saying God the Father no one can snatch you out of his hand and Jesus the Son is holding you with his hand, and no one can snatch you out of his hand. But in the midst of this, um, let's go ahead and use this. This represents the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is going to come and dwell you and now seal you and feel and dwell you, fill you. So the Spirit now comes inside the phone. And so, again, here's the Spirit inside you. He's never going to leave you. Read John 10, uh, John 14 and John 16. He's in there forever. He's never going to leave you. And he seals you, right? And so now, and then after that, you have God the Father holding you with his hand and Jesus the Son holding you with that hand. And it's like, oh my gosh. And then again, all this stuff is like, okay, let me go ahead and put this all in here. <laughs> you know? I mean, that's what it's like. And so, man, I tell you, so to the gentleman that I was speaking to yesterday, I was like, you're probably going to slip up and sin again in your mind, your will, and your emotions, right? But who you are in your heart and spirit is who you are. And so, so many people within recovery, they slip um, and they fall and they stumble because their minds are not completely renewed. And so they go, they lose their sobriety, they start all over and they get back up on that treadmill and start priming the pump like the steps tell you. If you want what I got, you need to do what I did. And this is what I did. I got on that treadmill and I started priming the pump, looking at every nook and cranny. And it's like, there is a better way. <laughs> there is a better way. And it's called believing in the death, burial, and resurrection. And then accepting that as a free gift by grace through faith. And when you catch that you've been, you were crucified and cut away from Adam and all those thoughts that are circling through your head, those are all connected to how you, your earth experience of living independent of God, but you're no longer independent of God. Your heart of stone's been cut away. You're now new, totally new. And so now the life of the spirit, again, that's holding you, right? We already have, we already have God and Jesus and now the spirit in me. And now as I live in dependence upon the spirit. Now the spirit produces his fruit through me. One of those is self-control, but I'm continuing to be renewed. And so these 16 lane, super lane highways that are going through my, my brain from this behavior, they're just supposed to be one or two lane paths. Those in time get renewed, okay? But I'm always living from my new heart and my new spirit. And as I live from that and I'm continuing to be renewed and to remember what happened in, in the gospel, then these ruts get filled in and little by little those things that were behaviors that were kicking my butt just fall away as i gaze in the mirror and i see his glory as i'm looking in that mirror right now you're my mirror and as i gaze into you i see the glory and the grace that's within it's just so beautiful we're being transformed from glory to glory from what was in, true inside to the glory outside. That was uh, 2 Corinthians 3, or the, I think it's verse 18. But uh, good stuff. Hey, good to be with you. Thanks for joining me. Hope you had some fun. I'll post a link to that guy getting, getting knocked out, being a show off, okay, in the comments. Good to have you. Have a great day. Bye.